Let's point this thing to the sky. Get movement soon, they say. At first, the movement of the obelisk is almost imperceptible. But slowly, the point of the stone begins to rise. doing here today feels very Egyptian to me. The ramp, the box looks very archaic. The colossal ropes, the big logs, the sand. It's big and it's massive, but it's using very simple forces. Simply the force of flowing sand. They had no problems throwing thousands of people at the job. This is the approach the Egyptians would have taken. approach takes time. After half a day of digging, the obelisk has only rotated a third of the way toward the turning groove. As the hours pass and the obelisk sinks deeper into the pit, Rick's method is truly put to the test when more and more pressure falls on the brake ropes. How much of the rope stretched so far? Well, the ropes have stretched around seven to eight inches. Wow, really? Yeah, and we, uh, we, we're still well within the safety range. Oh. Rick's team predicted a certain amount of stretch in the ropes. But if their estimates are wrong, the obelisk could overshoot the turning groove. Tension mounts as the stone approaches the critical angle of 75 degrees. With the obelisk nearing the back of the sandpit, Rick can't resist the temptation to jump in and dig for himself. Okay. Feel the pedestal yet? Gauge pull. Gauge pull. Gauge pull. The obelisk is now leaning against the wall of the sandpit and is directly in line with the turning room. Turning groove right here. See, see the curvature. Yeah, there it is. You can see if I hold this tape as a straight edge, you can see where the obelisk is going to come right down inside the turning groove. Wow, that's a bullseye. Direct hit. We're just about nine and a half inches from the top of the pedestal stone. That looks pretty good. Now it's a matter of gradually releasing the brake ropes. and removing the last bits of sand. For three more hours, the work goes on. Finally, in the dark of night and without a sound, the 25-ton obelisk nestles into its groove. When the sun returns and the sandbox is removed, Rick can appreciate how far he's come. You can see we have the obelisk in the turning groove. It's at 75 degrees. Most of the hard work's done. But we, remaining is a task that is, uh, could be daunting, and that is we have to uh, now pull the obelisk that last 15 degrees into the 90 degree position. Those of you who have been trained in pulling, please come this way and report right here. Well, the worst thing that could happen is, is that we lose control in the pull and the obelisk uh, 
comes com crashing down. This is a very tense moment. If you would go ahead and take the ropes and pull the slack out of them. Leading the pullers okay, is Rick's leader, colleague, engineer out, Greg Mullen. Really start on it Greg's job slowly. is to scare the undisciplined volunteers into pulling slowly and gently. You can't be talking. You all notice I'm married. You notice what's missing on my hands? Go ahead and take your rings off. If one of the ropes flies, it can catch your ring and it'll pull the meat off your finger. All right, go ahead and take up the slack. Take it slow. Let's get it light. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. If they pull too hard, the fragile obelisk could topple over and crash to the ground. Gently, gently. To prevent this kind of disaster, Rick's team is once again using brake ropes. While the gang below pulls the obelisks toward vertical, the brake crew holds it back, letting the ropes out slowly so the obelisk can't work up any momentum. The brake lines have got it. We are at 89. What do we got? 89, 89 degrees. Okay. We have touchdown. We have a freestanding obelisk. Your inspiration, Roger. This is the way the Egyptians did it. This is the way we did it. We were mimicking the Egyptians. It's a very perfect moment. The Egyptians had to do it with as much control and just as slowly because they not only had months and months of hieroglyphs that had been cut, people may have died, a lot was invested, and they would have had just as much control. I'm glad we got it done. Common sense, and what I knew intuitively would work, proved itself. I'm a happy camper. This is the kind of thing that uh, we uh, had hoped for. And, and, it, and it happened because from the very beginning, we believed that uh, if we acted and thought like the Egyptians, that we would have the success. You know, the Egyptians were, were learning through keen observation, looking carefully at all the details. They learned how these materials behaved. And, and once they understood that, they used those forces of nature to be able to do something as magnificent as this. The great obelisks of Egypt were pointed to the sky. The engineers in charge of the raising would have done all they could to protect the pharaoh's monument. Most likely, the process was slow and painstaking, relying on human sweat and the gentle force of sand. The method may have been simple, but the result was spectacular.